Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome to our brand new Fernleaf Islands, where our next little tribe of critters are going to try their very best to conquer the latest experimental update that just hit the game. If you would like to try it out too, then I will leave a link in the description of the video to the instructions and how to download the update, but just remember that it's still in its experimental stages, so we are likely to run into a couple of glitches and bugs every now and then. Of course, the biggest change that the developers made to the game is probably the big jungle biome that they added. We will have to go to a brand new island in order to experience it for ourselves, but that is way off in the future of our tribe, because we have to make sure that we're not only strong enough, but also stealthy enough to evade all of the new predators that are lurking around in the grass. Eve is actually already showing off one of the brand new genes in the game. She has a big, stinky tail. I guess it's supposed to be kind of like um, a skunk tail, but it really looks like she's almost like a gray squirrel. She looks like Eve the gray squirrel, and in fact, if we go in here, we might be able to see her tail a little bit better. There we go. So a giant skunk tail. Basically, this makes it so she just doesn't smell very tasty. And that's going to help us when we're in the jungle battling those uh, different creatures, those different predators, because they might be a little less likely to munch on our creatures with a stinky tail. There are a few new genes in the mutation menu too that we can take a look at, like the warning dots. This actually makes the animal look poisonous, so again, something to help us kind of evade all of those really nasty creatures in the jungle. And then we have um, the velvet paw too, which gives us a little bit of stealth so we can move around the grass quietly. Our senses are also a little bit more important than they were before. We have brand new senses on the side of the screen over here, and if you click on these icons, then you can listen in the grass for any sorts of little bunnies that might be hopping around, or on um, predators, of course. If the carnivores are around, we might be able to see them in the grass as well. You can sniff around from berry bushes and roots too, so this is very, very helpful. Unfortunately, Eve this time does not have her big nose. It actually seems like they may have changed the way she spawns a little bit, because she certainly has never had this big giant claw on her before. She's like Eve the warrior in this playthrough. She has the berry paw as well, so not only will she be able to protect us pretty well with her own big claw, but she'll also be able to collect all of these berries from the berry bushes. So I think to start things off, we probably should go ahead and collect our berries, and then we could go ahead and have Adam actually breed with her. Now he does have the webbed hind feet, which I do not like to see because we definitely want them to be a little bit faster on land right now, especially as we go to um, the jungle biome because we're going to need to be able to shuffle our creatures around very quickly. So I think what I'll do is actually place the um, normal hind legs in the mutation menu. There they are in the 30% slot, just so that their children are a little bit more likely to inherit um, Eve's hind legs instead. And then from there, why don't we actually try to place something new in here? Why don't we see if we can mutate the warning dots. That might be interesting because that might make it um, a little bit easier for us later on as we're breeding more creatures. So I would like them to have a little brood on this tiny, tiny island, but because it is so small, I don't think we're going to be spending a lot of time here. Most likely, after they start their family, I'll take all of their children over to these ports with all of these beautiful flowers, and we'll see if we can go to a much larger grasslands biome instead. For now though, Adam, why don't you go ahead and expand the territory a little bit? He can scoop up this grass. Instead of peeking in the grass now, you actually gather it up. When you gather the grass, there is a chance that you could gather up some nesting material too. So now we don't have to just rely on these permanent nests that pop up in the grass. We can also place nests down ourselves. So hopefully we'll be able to um, do that with Eve once she has her baby on this next turn. And in fact, let's go ahead and skip the day and see what their very first baby is going to look like. Oh my goodness, he has the stripes. He has the stripes. Okay, so that actually came from uh, Eve's genetics, and it increases their camouflage when they're hiding in the grass. So this little guy, Nuro, is probably going to be very, very good at um, sneaking around in the tall grass when he's looking for maybe bunnies. Maybe he'll be a good bunny hunter. I mean, he does have that big claw too, so he is definitely a protector of the pack. It looks like he didn't inherit um, Eve's stinky tail, her big uh, giant squirrel tail, but he does have it in his genetics, so maybe we could pull that out later. But uh, yeah, we'll have them have another baby, I think. We could have Eve scoop up some berries and then slide over to another tile. And in fact, I think I want her to stay right by the berry bush so she can continue to pick the berries. So why don't we have Adam actually scoot up this way so that Eve can come over here and then when she breeds with him, she'll be able to plop a nest straight down on this empty tile. So it takes 10 pieces of a nesting material to actually make a nest. 
and now she'll be able to give birth on the very next turn. The only difference between these nests and the ones that are permanently spawned in the world is that these will actually degrade over time, so we'll have to repair them with more of that nesting material if we want to use them again. We also have a brand new notification center over on the side of the screen too that'll tell us like when a new baby has been born and when somebody passes away, so this is particularly nice when you have those really large islands and you're having trouble keeping up with everything going on. But um, for now, we'll just go ahead and turn that off and we'll have Adam actually peek in a little bit more of this grass and maybe we should sniff around too. So we have um the berry bushes down here and then we have this little root in the ground. If we had somebody with the digging paw, then they could actually come down here and um, dig that up for some extra food. So that might be a pretty good thing to also mutate into our pack. But oh my goodness, if we listen into the grass, we can also see that we have some moles back here. So this is a new source of food. As long as we come at these guys from behind, so as long as they're not watching us when we're stalking them, then we can actually sneak up on them and grab them before they go back into their burrows. So that might be Adam's job pretty soon, or maybe even his son. Maybe they could both go um, mole hunting together once he grows up a little bit. The babies are actually given um, a little bit of a decrease in their stats right when they're born. So right now his stats are um, kind of stunted. He can only move one space at a time. Same for swimming if they were in the water, I suppose. And he also can um, gather from the berry bushes. If he did have the collecting skill, then that wouldn't be available to him just yet. So once he grows up a little bit, he should be able to go out with his father and maybe they can hunt down some moles together. But let's go ahead and see what their second baby is going to look like. Let's see, it's a little girl. Oh my goodness, and she has the claw too. So yet again, it seems like the claw is a little bit more dominant than um, the berry paw is. Hopefully it's not going to be exactly the same as it was for us um, in the Tribe of the Tides because we had a lot of trouble getting that berry paw to pass. But as long as we have a couple of children with um, Eve's berry pot too, then I feel like we'll be in a good situation to possibly move on to the larger island with um, more possibilities not only for resources, but also to really diversify our genetics. So why don't we start moving Adam over this way? We'll have to have him go around the nest so that he can sit on the other side of the nest over here. And I think um, the moles are still in the area. They kind of turn in a circle after every move that you make. So as long as these guys aren't looking straight at us when we go into the grass then we should be fine. Um, I guess we can move the little baby out over here too so that he can find all of these resources. Whoa! So of course we have this berry bush down here but we also have another extra nest and this one is not going to fall apart on us so that is very very good. A very good fine little Noro. And then um, Anair, let's see, she can't move just yet so we'll have her mother scoot over to this nest to have yet another baby with Adam and then she can go ahead and pick her berries. And then I guess, um, let's see, is the mole looking at us now? Let's see if we can hear it. Okay, they're looking this way. So we could actually have Adam scoot into the grass, but the only problem is it's his last turn, so he won't be able to actually grab this mole. I guess we could possibly set him up for it though. So let's have him scoot in here. And yeah, the mole hasn't seen us just yet because he's not actually looking at him. But let's see if he'll stay that way when we pass the turn here. Let's see if he'll actually stay right there. I think he is. So we can go ahead and snatch this guy right up and then grab his meat too. So there we go. We hunted down our first mole and Nero was watching very closely. So I'm sure he'll be interested in um, possibly snagging the one over here. But it looks like we have a little cracker jaw baby. Oh my goodness, look at you. Nudukunu, I believe his name is. And he has the nimble fingers, okay. So he can be our collector. And it also looks like he has a spiky body too, which is interesting. I believe he may have um, pulled that out from Eve's genetics. Yeah, the spiky body. So the spiky body actually isn't that bad anymore. It was pretty bad in the last update because it harmed every single pack mate that um, interacted with them. But now they've changed it so the only time a spiky body will actually harm one of the pack mates is if they have to come over and lick their wounds. So as long as we make sure that new Duke new is um, not harmed in any way that would cause us to need to lick his wounds, then we shouldn't have to worry about his pack mates getting hurt. Now let's go ahead and sniff in the grass again. Let's see, we can listen in for the mole. So this guy is kind of looking straight at us, so I'm not sure if it would be the best idea for Neuro to really go diving in right now. And we have a bunny down here too! Oh man, we have a bunny on the shore, so that probably means that there's um, another one of those bunny burrows over here somewhere. We'll have to go ahead and see if we can find it. In fact, maybe Eve could dive into the grass this way. So we have this bush over here, which is probably what it was after. And in fact, we should probably scoop up those berries before the bunny comes over to him take it instead. I have a feeling that they're probably um, trying to loop around so they can get to our berry bush. And then let's see, the mole is now looking away, so maybe his son could scoot in a little bit deeper. We could have 
marrow come over here at the very least, and I'm peeking a little bit more of this grass. We did manage to collect some nesting material from that piece of grass, so at least there's that. At least we have a little bit more material. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough to actually repair this nest if it needs to be. Um, we can also pick up the nests if we don't want to use them anymore. We can actually destroy them for their own resources, and we'll get a little bit of nesting material back. But this is particularly nice because if we want to start those extra little tribes off in different corners of the islands once we get to the bigger places, then we will be able to do that. We won't have to rely on these permanent nests that we find around the world. We could actually just drop our own little nurseries around wherever we wanted to. So I think that's really fun and it's going to um, help us really create our story later on too. For now though, Anir, I don't want you moving too far away because the babies will also get completely killed if they're attacked by our carnivore. So we want to make sure that she's safe which is why I'm keeping her right by her mother. But for now, let's um, zoom out a little bit and go ahead and skip the day and make sure that nothing is coming out. Everything looks fine so far, and we did get some nice rain as well. So now, Eve, you really have a big job ahead of you because we have so many berry bushes, and unfortunately, your um, little son is not yet old enough to do any collecting. So we could move Nuduknu over this way so that on the next turn, at least, he will be able to pick from this berry bush. And for now, Eve, you're just going to have to collect as many as you possibly can, as many as your little fingers can carry. Luckily, um, Anir has grown her second gem, so she should be just fine now, and we could do a little bit more exploring with her, too. Let's see, let's sniff around though. Let's see if there's anything we need to be concerned with. Um, so far so good. I don't see that little bunny again. It's probably hopping all around the shore looking for more berries though. And then of course we do have that mole back there. So let's see if we can actually get this guy. Let's um, sniff him out and then we'll have Neuro jump in the grass maybe. Though I feel like he's probably going to turn straight at Neuro if he jumps in there. So maybe instead we'll have um, Adam use a couple of his turns. Yeah, look at that. He would have looked straight at us. So let's wait until he's not looking. Oh, and there's a bunny too. Oh shoot. Well, we definitely can't get the bunny because he's too far on the grass, but we could have a neuro scoot right over here and then swipe at this mole. There we go. There we go. So we managed to hunt down yet another one of those moles and he'll be able to um, pick up that meat in the next turn. And we have another nest over here. Oh my gosh. There's so many nests in this area. And there's that little bunny too. So unfortunately we have a little bit too much grass for an air to really jump in there and um, grab the bunny. So instead I'll have her continue um, scooting off this way. We'll have her keep looking in all of the grass around on the right side of the island just to kind of expand the territory around all of their nests. And then let's go ahead and skip the day again and see if there's anything else that we need to be really concerned about. Um, so far, so good. So let's listen around. Okay, so there's a bunny right here, right in this little pocket right here. Is it actually munching on any berries? Um, it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it's munching on our berries. So maybe we could have Eve actually scoot into the grass over here. We'll have her jump right here and find the bunny burrow. There it is. There's that pesky bunny burrow. So maybe if we actually leave her right in this location, the bunny will jump back up again. Let's see if we can do that. We could actually have Adam come down here and grab this bunny though. There we go. And that one has scooted off into the darkness, so our plan has failed. But at the very least, we can have Nuduknu go ahead and pick up his berries. He can pick up uh, quite a few of those, three berries at a time, so he can basically pick this entire bush clean. Now, Neuro, you are going to have to pick up your mole meat, and then why don't you actually explore the area a little bit more too? Now, I feel like maybe Anair would want to explore a little bit more with her brother. Maybe she would come over here and help him clear out the area too. And then we'll have um, Adam and Eve have one more baby on the next turn, I think, so that we have more creatures to spread around the territory. Um, it looks like something actually unlocked as well. Okay, the nimble fingers. Good, that is very good to see because then we could possibly get some uh, more nimble fingers on our babies too. Like as long as we have a decent spread between the claw and the nimble fingers, then I will be very happy going to the next island. But let's have Adam move right over here so that Eve can move into the nest. And then he'll be able to um, breed with her while she still picks her berries. She still has a couple of those turns to pick her berries with. We could actually have Adam peek in the grass so we don't lose that berry bush. We might as well. And then um, New Duke New, you can go ahead and pick your berries and peek in the grass too. So now this nest has actually degraded. We're going to have to um, repair it before we can use it again. And I believe it takes um, three pieces of nesting material to repair a nest. So if we need to use that in the future, we can definitely go over there and repair it because we do have four pieces of nesting material left. 
left. It would be nice though, before we go to the next island, if we could possibly gather up enough resources to hopefully drop down some more nests in different places. But Nero is fully grown too. Let's actually have him sniff around before he uses his last turn. Oh, we have another mole over here. Okay, it looks like actually a Nair, you might be able to jump in here and grab this one for us. There we go. So our pack is absolutely full of mole hunters this time. We are the mole hunting pack and we have another one back here too. Oh my goodness, Nero. Um, let's have you clear out the grass so we have a little bit of a um, straighter shot toward that mole. We do want to get as close to it as possible without potentially scaring it away. But let's go ahead and skip the day again and see what their fourth little baby is going to look like. Oh my goodness, it's another little girl with the green eyes too. Oh, she looks almost just like her mother with those green eyes with of course the um, fur color of her father instead and that claw, that adorable claw just waving away at us. Um, maybe we should actually try to get the poison fangs on one of their babies too. It would be nice if we could pass the poison fangs along at least once because those are quite important when we're um, running away from carnivores. So why don't we swap this around a little bit again? Unfortunately, those warning dots have just not shown up on our creatures yet. I guess we'll go ahead and place the poison fangs in the 30% slot just to give it a little bit more of a boost. We'll breed them one more time. We'll go ahead and pick our berries too. Um, New Duke New, if we could only find you an area with a more than one berry bush to pick from. I wonder if he goes over here, if maybe he could discover some himself. We'll have him pick from this bush instead. And then um, when he grows his next gem, he can kind of wander off into the grass and see what he can find. And then we'll have our two little exploring twins over here. They almost look like twins. Oh my goodness, with their fur and their stripes. We'll have them go ahead and pick up that meat that they just collected. And then um, you guys can go ahead and charge off into the grass in the northern parts of the island. So let's bounce your way off into the grass here. Um, I think there was another mole over here, right? Yeah, there is. And we could definitely snag that one. So Nero, why don't you jump in the grass, snatch it up for us and pick up the meat too. There we go. Now we have a ton of roots back here too that these guys are sniffing out. If only we had a creature with a digging paw. I mean, maybe we'll come across one. Maybe um, somebody in the grass is lured over here by um, all of those roots. That would be nice. We haven't found any wandering creatures yet after all. And typically they are found kind of rustling around in the grass early on in the game. So we'll have to see if maybe they can stumble across one of those wanderers. Um, for now, Adam, I suppose you could actually follow your children. Maybe he could actually help um, New Duke New a little bit because we don't really want him wandering off on his own, especially because he doesn't have a claw to protect him. He only has that spiky body. So we'll have Adam go along with his son to try to find berry bushes. And then let's see what their fifth baby is going to look like. Oh my gosh, look at this little guy. Oh, he is so cute. Ronuki, I believe his name is, and he has the spiky body too, along with the short-sighted eyes, which is not quite a um, helpful trait. Luckily, their other children have managed to um, mostly inherit the normal eyes. Unfortunately, Anair also has a short-sighted vision, and it looks like some of them also picked it up in their inactive traits. So we will have to keep a very close eye on that just to make sure that our creatures are um, able to see properly when we're on the harder islands. It looks like he also has the berry paw too, though. Yeah, he has the berry paw and the runner leg so he'll be just like his brother, his big brother who is all grown up now. Oh my goodness. So we could actually have them start playing leapfrog too. And there's another nest. Okay. There's another nest back here. There are a ton of bunnies rustling around in the grass. And let's see, are there any berry bushes? Um, no, surprisingly not, unless these guys are munching on the bushes that we can't um, sniff out just yet, because of course we don't have that big nose, so it's a little bit harder for us to smell in the grass. Let's have Adam scoot this way, and then we'll sniff around again. Um, There's that bunny burrow too, so we know where they're coming from at the very least, but it doesn't seem like there's really any new berry bushes out here. We do have one way up this way, so it looks like our twins will be able to pick out one for a new Duke new to use at least. But I suppose you guys should actually make a pathway here because we don't want you to lose your way, so we'll have you guys pick up the grass and the nesting material. And then you down here, a little messy, you're all alone in your nest. Why don't you actually scoot up this way so that your mother will be able to protect you? We'll have her come over here. Oh, there was a mole over there too. So that one kind of skittered back into um, its little burrow because it definitely heard us coming, but it's still down there. So eventually it will pop up again. We just have to um, keep a very close eye on it and maybe we'll be able to snatch it up before it goes away next time. In fact, if we peek at this, then it'll be a little bit easier for us to see. 
but we can use Eve's last turn to have her pick up the berries. And then you guys back here are going to need to continue to explore. So is there anything back here? Um, we don't have anything that we need to really pounce on, but we do need to at least pick up that berry bush. There is a mole over this way as well. So why don't you guys scoot over here, peek at the berry bush for us and kind of like make a pathway so your brother can get to it. And then we could have Anair start making her way into the grass over here to hopefully um, surprise this mole. Now she does have that increased camouflage on the grass, of course, because she has the stripes. So I'm wondering if maybe, maybe the mole wouldn't be able to spot her if she was in the grass. I'm not sure. I haven't really tried that out myself yet, so I'm not sure if that would work because um, typically when they are facing your direction, they scoot right back into their burrows. So we'll have to see if maybe we can sneak up on that guy, even if he is looking at us, as long as um, we have a striped creature in the grass. But other than that, I think this turn is done. So let's skip the day again. And um, we'll see if maybe Anair can go ahead and snatch that little guy up. We do have a lot of darkness over here, though. We're kind of getting separated. Um, luckily, Messi has grown her second gem, so we could actually have her come up here to protect the pack a little bit more. Oh my goodness, and we have a mole over here, too. So that little guy popped back out. Um, maybe we could have Eve launch herself in here, grab the mole, and then um, I guess she can pick up the meat too. Like, I do want her to stay by the berry bushes because she's one of the few with the nimble fingers. But um, for now, I suppose it's okay. Now, is there anything that you guys need to sniff out over in this direction? Just those pesky bunnies, of course. So let's have them start moving up as well. We'll have Adam come over this way toward um, the bunny burrow, and there's one of those berry bushes. Okay, so they definitely did have a berry bush right next to their burrow. A very opportune little bunny burrow. Um, let's see, is there... Is there actually a little bunny sneaking up our berries? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so we can hear it, but yet again, we can't actually sniff it because unfortunately, Adam does not have a very good sniffing ability. So we definitely need a creature with the um, big nose to help us out in that regard. But maybe we could at least scare this guy off because he is stealing our food right now. So let's have Adam scoot this way. Um, is the bunny still right there? I think he is. Yeah, he is definitely not moved. Okay, so at least we scared him um, by moving Adam there. And then we're going to have to have New Duke New jump right back in here to grab up these berries before the bunny comes back. So at least um, we picked that berry bush clean. We did manage to salvage all of that food. But now we want you guys to continue making your path over this way. Um, do we have the mole over here? Yes, we do. So let's go ahead and hunt our moles again. We'll have Anair jump into the grass and go ahead and slice this guy. So yeah, I'm not really sure if he would have noticed her or not, but um, it seems like she should be pretty well hidden if she's in the grass. Now, if we take Neuro over this way, then we can actually make it over to um some of this respawning grass. These um, lighter patches of grass will actually grow back after a while. You can tell because they kind of leave that little um, ghost of a grass piece behind. So eventually those will grow back and it'll give us another chance to possibly collect some more nesting material. Now it's just little messy and the baby too. So Renuk here, why don't you actually move a little bit closer to your family? Um, again, because of those short-sighted eyes, he can't really see very far. So we have a lot of darkness around us and I don't want him falling prey to any of those carnivores, of course. So why don't we actually have Messi move over here to protect her little brother, just to make sure that nothing is going to jump out and scare him. And then um, we'll go ahead and skip the day again. Now, how many more days do um, Adam and Eve have left on their lifespans? We have eight days left on them, so they could possibly have another baby. They have a nice little brood going for them so far, but we do have a ton of spaces that we could actually use to take more creatures to um, the larger Grasslands Island. So I would like to use up as many of these as possible. I mean, we might as well. We could literally take the entire family along with us. Um, now let's see, we unlock the claw, okay. So I don't think we need to worry about the claw just yet because we do have quite a few creatures with it already. But instead, let's have um, Adam and Eve breed again to hopefully give us one of those creatures with um, the poison fangs. Now Adam is way down here, I thought I lost him, oh my gosh. Let's have Adam scoot his way back toward his mate. Um, she could actually go to this nest maybe if she could make it there in time. Yeah, there we go, and then he'll be able to breed with her. And then he still has one little bit of energy left to possibly peek at some grass. Now we could have Naduke Nu kind of clear out the area a little bit for himself because we definitely want to be able to see around us, especially as we're going to have another baby here. Luckily, these two have grown up now, so we can have Ronuk here pick his berries. Um, I don't want his sister getting too far away from him, though, because he is going to be completely surrounded by darkness if she does. So she can be like his little guard, I guess. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, that legitimately scared me. We have, like, a shadow creature in here. What are you, a little shadow squirrel? You look almost exactly like Eve, except she's showing off one of the newest um, appearance traits. 
Oh my goodness, Messiana, okay. So she has, I guess, what would be called melanism. Basically, that means that all of her traits are completely black, and look at her. So Nero, would you like to um chat with her maybe? Invite her to the pack, I suppose? Um, It does cost five food to get this animal to join our tribe too, so that's interesting. It does actually cost food for us to invite them now. We'll have to keep that in mind, but we definitely want Messiana to join our tribe, right? I mean, she has pretty good genetics too, those nimble fingers that claw, the yeah, melanism, and um, normal blood clotting too, which is good to see. Yeah, we definitely, definitely need her in our pack. So let's go ahead and invite Messiana. Oh my goodness. And then maybe we could clear out the grass a little bit to um, really see her better. Let's have Nero go ahead and pick up some of this grass around her. And then she should actually be able to help us pick up all of these berries. I think that's actually what she was doing. She was trying to steal our berries on us. She's so hard to see though, because of course it's raining too, so it's a little bit too dark to see her. Let's go ahead and see if we can find her model actually um let's see messiana is up here this whole thing is very very tangled up though let's kind of like move these around a little bit so it's not so tangled there we go though messiana look at her she has that gorgeous tail too just like eve i mean she looks so much like eve almost like a little doppelganger like a mirror image almost because it seems like the claw and the nimble fingers are in separate spots Oh, that is a really strange, like Eve's shadow. Very, very interesting. A strange omen to um end this episode on in particular. So luckily we have explored a great majority of this island so far. We only have um a little bit more grass to possibly poke around in. And then I would like to take this entire brood over to the next island. This is going to be a larger version of the grasslands. Sometimes there's some swamplands mixed in with it too. So just plenty more opportunities for us to really get our packs um, diverse and strong and ready to take on that really hard jungle. It is crazy there. I am really looking forward to attempting to tackle it. I hope we're not going to completely drive our critters into extinction, but so far I feel like we've been doing pretty good. We have a nice mix of the nimble fingers and the claws, so I am feeling quite confident, at least um, on this very first episode. So thank you all so much for watching today, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!